Hello guys, I'm David and welcome to David Chat Series. Yeah, so basically I'm going to be walking you through the progression of this video. The first section is the question and answer section, which is basically Mr. IT answering all the questions that you sent in during the question tag we did on Instagram. And um, the second section is the shared section, which is, you know, IT and I doing our thing on the drums. <laughs> and the last section is the giveaway section, section where we'll be giving out a sum of 10,000 Naira to five people. And yeah, the question for the giveaway section will be taken from the question and answer section. So yeah, you have to pay close attention to what is going on in that section, the questions that are being asked and the answers that are given so you can be able to participate in the giveaway section. So with all that being said, let's get into the video. Uh, well, I would say music fell in love with me because I can't remember ever having any um, experience that made me say, oh, music, I want to do you, you know, that kind of thing. I just found myself in it and I can't even remember if I have any memories um, of me not doing music. My, it's, it has always been what I do you know, all my time, yeah? I started playing, uh, I think I was six. I started playing with cans and all of that. Um, and at that age, I don't think I really know how to choose something <laughs> so at that time. So I would say Drummy chose me because I could have been busy with other things as a, as a, as a small child. But I just found this passion uh, for drumming, playing around with sticks and all. Most, those are two different things. Calvin Lujas has influenced my drumming the most, um, I would say. And I, I think I speak on behalf of many other drummers in Nigeria. Um, and my music, ah, who has influenced my music the most? Um, I would say, I don't really know. There are so many names coming to my mind right now. But one person I would always again listen and listen and listen to again, no matter how old these records get would be any record produced by Kevin Bond. It always gets to me. Well, the most important thing on the stage for me is what I want to deliver. The crowd doesn't matter. If it is 10 people, it doesn't matter. If it's 100 people, it doesn't matter. The most important thing for me on this stage is what I have in mind to deliver. So, um, that doesn't allow me to have anxiety. I mean, it's as if I'm in my room and I want to play. What I want to deliver is the most important thing for me. So that's how I deal with it. Well, let's remove comfortable from that question because it's not really comfortable to shift genres, but it is important that you always do not be in your comfort zone. Um, it's a thing of joy for you to overcome discomfort. So I'm always looking out for, even the music genres I'm very familiar with, I'm look, always looking out for what's the new challenge I can bring for myself that will make me uncomfortable at the time so that I can expand and stretch and become better. So um, the only way to get comfortable is by practice. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, my top five drummers, where? living or dead in nigeria or outside nigeria uh so it's that's a very tricky question because okay i will i will say my top five nigerian drummers no i won't say it <laughs> because ah, of course david is one of my favorite drummers um it's tricky it's tricky sorry i'll just mention david thank you um non-Nigerian drummers, of course. We have Calvin Rogers, we have Teddy Campbell, the late Buddy Rich, um, Vinny Kalauta, Dave Wecky. Yeah. 
my practice routine it's um rudiments basically i i just play around rudiments i can take six um like the five stroke row for example and turn it into um different you know, that different permutations that you can achieve you you probably can't even exhaust it in a practice all time so I, I play around the rudiments and then I begin to expand them a little bit and then also I there's something I do I learned it from Calvin Rogers he, he said he would play a straight groove on the same tempo for about 30 minutes without playing around without playing chops or anything so that's something I I also do sometimes and that's actually helped me to be very solid um, in my delivery Yes, I dealt with inconsistency in practicing. Everybody deals with that. Everybody is a saint. There are times that you don't feel like touching the drums. There are times that you don't have time to touch the drums. There are times that you feel like you have finished everything on the drum. <laughs> Whichever category you fall into. But um, one way to overcome is, it is to... I just go on Instagram and I, I check particular drummers that I know that are way better than I am and then I see what they do it inspires me to tell me that dude don't sleep on it don't sleep on it get get up and um, get to work so I challenge myself um, by by studying other people what's the difference between a musician and a drummer By definition, a drummer is a musician. <laughs> but not every mu musicians are drummers. Uh, but I want to assume that the person that asks this question means is, has a has a deeper reason for asking that question. And so let me let me ride on that assumption. Um, being a drummer um, uh, doesn't qualify you to be called a musician yet until you actually understand the music of drumming. Yeah, so uh, when, when I say the music of drumming, I'm not talking about the theory alone, I'm talking about applications, you know, knowing the right grooves, knowing, knowing the right grooves to starting songs, knowing how to interpret what you have in mind. Uh, so I would say that's actually the transition. When, when you go from being the drummer that just wants to play around and the drummer that wants to play music, you know, and that's where the transition comes in. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, I've always said this that we've we've been most of us, most of we musicians that grew up in church, we have been given this impression that we are different from every other person, that we are special. <clears throat> I think every human being on earth is unique. And all, in, in all of our uniqueness, we need to eat. <laughs> we need to survive the day. <laughs> so, um, for many people, music or drumming might not be the way you make money to earn a living. It could be other things. So I don't see why there should be a, why there should be a um, discussion about it as to why a drummer should not be a businessman or how a drummer becomes a businessman. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Like do what you must to survive do most you must to to you know earn a living while not forgetting your passion yes i do i don't replace because my drum sounds good actually so if i replace the drum it's as if i'm taking away the life of the drum you know um so i don't replace the drum i oversample i double with samples and i use trigger trigger plug Trigger did not pay me for this advert. Okay, I will say it anyways. I use Trigger um, Platinum 2 for, for my drum sampling, doubling, and replacements, if there's any need for replacement. And I have a wide, even if you buy Trigger, it comes with lots of um, samples and um, well sampled drum, you know, drum samples. Yeah, kinda. And I also use Yosh samples for my drum sampling. The greatest lesson I've learned as a drummer and musician, I think I've mentioned it earlier, and that lesson is that you are just another regular guy. Move. <laughs> don't, don't wait until the whole world comes crumbling at your feet. Whatever is going to happen, or whatever has ever happened, was made to happen. Uh, 
Um, as a drummer, my most challenging period would be when I was trying to transition from being a local drummer to, to a drummer that understands the music of drumming and contemporary music. That was around 2006. Um, it was tough for me because I, I felt inside of me that there was more to what I had. There was more to draw me, but I was not exposed. My environment wasn't giving me the exposure I needed. So I, I disobeyed my parents. I did a lot of crazy things to break out of that cycle because it seems everybody around me was not seeing what I was seeing. So it was a very tough time for me, but I'm glad I went through that challenge. No, I don't have any. I've not gone to any music school before. I've taught in music schools. I, I still teach in certain music schools, but I've not, I've not been a student of any music school before, so I don't have any music certification, but I'm working on one very soon, so that when, next time you ask this question, I'll be, have something to present to you. It depends on which kind of career. One thing about music is that there are many things you can be in music. And many of those things don't really need formal education. That's one good thing about music. It's an art. And um, um, most of the successful musicians I know, that I know personally or from a distance, they don't necessarily need a, musical, a music certification to become who they were or who they are for those that are still alive. Uh, but some, some of them at some point in their lives decided to get those certifications just for the fun of it or for certain and even some of them got honorary um, degrees. I, I know people, I mean we have people in our country, even in the gospel cycle in Nigeria that are doctors of philosophy, PhD holders in music and those doctors, those doctorate degrees are, were, were um, what do you call it? They were honorary degrees. It's not like they went to school for them. So um, up till now, I, I, I still don't know how that really affects their career. But I know that there's, there's kind of respect that you have in the music um, industry if you have a certification. But beyond the certification, make sure that your delivery can actually defend <laughs> your certification. Because you cannot come to me now and say, you're a professor of music and you cannot play on all keys. I'd be like, so what are you professing? Hmm. How do I balance work, life, family, and music? Back to the first thing I said the other time, I'm just another regular guy. I have a family, I have bills to pay, I have targets to hit, I have um, personal goals to achieve. So I do it the way every other person would. Dedication, discipline, wake up early, um, make sure I get my tasks done, I organize my life quite well. <clears throat> I get to a point where some of the things I want to do, I can outsource. I outsource them. People get things running for me. Like every other normal person would <laughs> approach life. Yeah. Well, will I say it's an error? I think it's a disorder. Because it's not so difficult to get knowledge now, there's less value placed on knowledge now. I mean, when I was growing up, I was talking to a friend of mine, Joshua, I was telling him the other day uh, that it's not easy to... Back then, before you even have access to internet, you will go to a cafe. Hmm? The network will be slow as, as tortoise. You will now be waiting to download PDF. Now, after you download the PDF, you don't have a computer that you put the PDF in. You have to be going back to the cafe to run to watch the PDF or you look for money and go and print the PDF so that you can read. <laughs> All of that is something you can do at a snap of your finger now. So because it is easy to get information, um, less value is placed on information. So the nitty gritty of the drumming thing, a lot of young drummers kind of skipped it. Um, I, was, I was talking to a drummer one time and I needed him to play a particular feel and I was like, play this feel in the right way to play according to the rudiments used to form the feel. And he was finding it so difficult and I was telling myself that 
if this guy had learned rudiments before he knows how to play those fields, he won't find it difficult to maneuver the rudiments into recreating the field. So I would advise younger drummers go back, go back to study. Um, yeah, you can play chops, and after you play, everybody will shout and all of that. But there's some rooms when you enter those rooms, you won't be able to say pim because you don't know what it takes to create from scratch. And the only way you can form a vocabulary is if you went back to learn the alphabets. You learn the alphabets, you learn the, the words, before you learn the phrases, before you learn the sentences, before you cannot say, yeah, I want to write a whole paragraph. Before you cannot say, yeah, I want to write a whole page. Before you cannot write an entire story. There is a step, um, step by step process that I will advise all young drummers to go through again. well you have to be humble no matter how good you think you are there's always someone better there is always someone better there's always some someone better um uh, also be open to knowledge don't think what you know is the you know or what your mentor told you what your teacher told you is everything be open let your mind have an open mind to learning um i would also say that um, learn how to network don't spoil relationships because most of the gigs that will change your life you will get it through somebody else just don't stop working um, technology is an advantage should be an advantage not a disadvantage so use it to your own advantage go out there learn sit down with, let you two be your best friend See, I just told you guys I did not go to any music school. I did not go to any music production school. I learned everything I know in music production, in mixing, and all of that. I learned it through the internet, on YouTube, and on some other sites. Some courses I paid for, some are free. And I mean, these are resources available for every human being that has access to the internet. So use that to your own advantage. And for those of you that are Christians, be locked up in a church, even if you are not unemployment in the church make sure you have a spiritual covering you know it's part of the whole thing we talk about uh be committed to community service be committed be, be committed to church service be be interested in networking and and grow with other people don't don't have this idea that some of we your elders have that when another drummer comes visiting we are coming to oppress ourselves or coming to compete with ourselves when you climb those stages don't see it as competition just do your thing that's one of the that's one of my secrets i don't see competition if you are competing with me you are the one competing with me i'm not competing i don't see competition i just do my thing and uh, i try my best also don't try to be any anybody see no matter how much you try to copy Kevin rogers Try to copy Jed, try to copy Mosugu, try to copy D4C, Karo. No matter how much you try to copy these guys, you can only be a second half, a second version of them. They are the original version. So if you keep copying people up and down, when are we going to hear the original version of you? If you don't sit down to, to bring out the ingenuity inside of you, we will never hear the original version of you and you only be a shadow of whoever you're copying so sit down sit down with your craft be real to yourself right so that's what i have to tell you guys thank you so much for having me um um thank you david for having me on this um program uh and thanks to everyone that sent their questions in it was really fun um doing this project with david and i'm sure you are going to follow and subscribe to david's youtube account and um that guy has a lot of content and um, I'm sure he has plans for um, more content coming soon. So thank you for your time. God bless you.
temperature. Why? How you be? The hot one. How they hot? How <laughs> hot? Yo guys, I'm back. But yeah, before we go into the giveaway section, I want to use this opportunity to say a very big thank you to Mr. Itunu IT Sticks. And this is because this whole project is, is a dream come true for me. Because you are somebody that I have always looked up to. And um, now I'm doing a project with you. It's just, it's just crazy. So thank you so much. We are grateful. Myself and the entire team are so grateful. Thank you so much, sir. So now on to the giveaway. The question for the giveaway will be the last thing that will pop up in this video. And that is because I want you to drop your answers in the comment section and not in the live chat. If you drop it in the live chat, it goes away with the premiering of the video. So, like, I want the premiering to, to end, then you drop the questions in the comment section. So I can reply your comments if you are one of the first five people to get the answers correctly. I reply your comments asking for your Instagram handle then I will send you a DM on Instagram and from there we get to do all the old transfer of the money and all of that. So yeah, the question for the giveaway will be the last thing that will pop up in this video. So you have to watch the video till the end. <laughs> yeah, with all that being said, I want to say a very big thank you to you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for staying up until this point. And I really, really hope that you learned something, at least from, if not from the shed, at least from the question and answer section. I really hope you were able to get something that you would, that will help with your practice routine, that will help with your journey as a musician and as a drummer. And so yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And um, yeah, thank you to every single member of the team as well. This took weeks and months to plan and um, even down to the execution. So, so it's just really crazy. But here we are and I'm super grateful to every single person. And um, yeah, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't. Like the video, share it and subscribe to the channel. As Mr. IT said, there are more contents on the way. I'm going to be dropping more contents. So if you don't want to miss them, you subscribe. Press the subscribe button and be a part of the community. Join the community of David. <laughs> I don't even know. Just join the community. Thank you so much. I see you all in the next one. Peace.